right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Irrational Confidence Podcast. We're talking college basketball, and I'm back home. It's warm. I'm not freezing this time. I'm not looking like I'm heading into a rap battle all bundled up. <sighs> that was rough to record, but we are in one weekend of the NCAA tournament is in the book. What more could we do? And the man who I had to go and check him out of the hospital because he the madness had gotten to him too much. My co-host, Fresh. Fresh, how you doing, buddy? Chaos, buddy. Chaos everywhere. Um, whether it's everyone's bracket being absolutely destroyed. More, more, actually, more looking like a Jackson Pollock payment, uh, painting where there's just splatters of ink everywhere because everything's so destroyed. Um, or my hostile takeover where I had four teams after Thursday and Friday and I no longer have four teams. Um, just... Every time we think, you know what, one of these years we're just going to get chalk. We're going to have a, you know, a lot of the lower seeds take it through, and all these double-digit seeds are going to get beat like they should, and we're still waiting on that year to happen because that did not happen this time. So, Fresh, I'm going to actually go back to our first. When we first started talking about the tournament here, the first word that both of us said was parody. And I think after this opening weekend, we got parody. Like, it's there. It's right there for us. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I've been thinking about this. I haven't asked anyone else this. I didn't even kind of lead you into it before our show, so this is coming straight off of this. Would you rather have a tournament like this where there's parity or what we've had in the college football playoff where it seems like it's the Blue Bloods time and time again playing for the national title or it's the same couple of teams do you like a tournament that is more parody? You got to take the Georgia fan out of it about Georgia win national titles in football. But I'm talking about I'm you talking can't about compare sports. Seth. You you can't compare college basketball to college football because college football there's a physical element and there's depth that completely will murder someone. You cannot have a Princeton football team playing a TCU or a Georgia or an Alabama and expect them to compete. That's a different story. Basketball is, basketball creates chaos because players can shoot. You're, you're, you have a right. little more of a, a balance. You cannot compare football to basketball when it comes that's, to a playoff. So let's not go down. Let's not start that conversation or go down that road because that's not going to end well from that perspective. Well, I think you're missing the question. Then, if you're, I'm not. Yeah, you, are about, you saying are you saying just chaos and parity at the college football level I'm or saying, college basketball level? Then I'm that is fine. That, I'm saying parity when it comes to it. Where in this bracket right now. With what is remaining, there is realistically only there's only four teams left in the Sweet 16 that have won a national title, and the most recent one would be the Yukon Huskies in 2014. What I'm saying about parity is talking about you know it's not the names ever same names every single year in the in the college football playoff. You know, like again on a given year, if you went out into Vegas next year and voted for and put your money and said one of these four teams, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and Clemson, I'm going to take one of those four teams will make the college football playoff. What I'm saying is that we're seeing all of these other names go in there. Would you rather see a playoff where there's other names outside of the ones we've gotten used to in football? Like it's, it's com- you still you cannot compare college football to college basketball, Seth, because the depth concerns that basketball has, where you have a shooter or you have one or two guys who can make things happen, and and, and you get into college football, it's the line line of scrimmage. The bigger programs are going to have the depth, they're going to have the talent, they're going to recruit better, and eventually that's going to wear the teams down. You're going to have losses come along the way. College football season is the NCAA college basketball tournament, where that's where you see the upsets happen, and you get the four in the playoff. And that's where some of the parity as college football we've talked about in the past, where more teams are creating chaos. But if you have one or two teams, they win their conference in football, they're going in. College basketball is a whole different monster where it's one game, think, you know, foul trouble comes into play, shooters come into play, who can play down low and make their free throws. Teams looking, you know, overlooking to other opponents. It's, it's a different mess. You can't compare the two. Um, I, I think chaos is great. Um, but if you went into the regular season right now and put down Texas, UCLA, UConn, Creighton as teams that would make the Sweet 16, you might have only gotten two of the four uh, on gotten pretty good odds to pay back on. It's there two, there's two different things you cannot compare. You know, a, that's apples to oranges in this perspective. 
So, and to me, I, I look at it differently than you are. I, I understand what you're saying on this here, Fresh. But what I'm, what I'm saying is maybe not going outside of the group of Power Five. I'm saying that it's different teams outside of those groups. That, like, teams that haven't made it, like, I would have loved to have seen a team like South Carolina out of the SEC or maybe a team like Wisconsin out of the Big Ten who haven't made the college football playoff. Having a, when you get into it, yes, you're talking about apple. You're not even talking apples to oranges. We're talking to ant apples to pineapples right now. Well, here. wasn't TCU that team then? There's one of them. That's one out of them. But the other one else you could argue would be blue blood. I would say I like the idea of, and again, this goes against even my own fandom of saying, you know, my, 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 we're both fans of teams that are considered blue bloods. I, I love the idea that there are some teams that aren't always in the mix in the final area. I mean, we've had Cincinnati and TCU the past two years, but it really it comes down to where your preseason ranking is and can you navigate your schedule and build up that and at the end survive. Um, it might have more entertainment from a football perspective if you got like a 12-team playoff um, where you had the first four gets buys and goes from there. And you might get some of those outliers who are the group of five leagues. Um, but you're not going to have an Ivy League team. You're not going to have an FCS opponent jumping in. So you're not going to have that Cinderella story from that perspective when it comes to football. But you're going to still have maybe a Mountain West school or you know an AAC repeater or, or a Conference USA team if they luckily can go undefeated. But even then, you know, Tulane played a beat up US, uh, USC team with Caleb Williams struggling, and the team basically had packed it in after losing the Pac-12 title game. They still had to win in the last drive of the game. If they were actually playing in a playoff and, US, and USC was healthy, I don't know if Tulane actually truly would compete. Um, but when guys are opting out in bowl games, that creates a whole different story where that looks like they could. Uh, chaos is great; it's fun, but in the end, you know, are one of these Cinderella teams going to win a title? I'm not sure. Yeah. Personally, me, I like I like the idea of other names occasionally being in there a little more often than what we're seeing. But let's stick to basketball here because that's the one we're going to talk about. Fresh, crazy weekend. We have our second time ever. We have F. Fairly Dickerson University, which I don't know many people would know that university is in New Jersey. I knew it was either in the New York or New Jersey area. I had to look that up. But Purdue gets upset by them. Second time ever, the 16 seed is upset, number one. We have Princeton upsetting Arizona. We have everything going crazy here. We're taking a look at Michigan State upsetting Marquette in the second round there. We have Kansas losing to Arkansas. This has just been wild. I mean, it's the first tournament ever where you've had a 16 and a 15 seed advance the second round. And then we also had the 13 seed. Just think about that. And they, this term is going on for a long, long time. The first time you've had both those occurrences happen. And then you funny you mentioned Purdue. Purdue's trying they're, – they're getting close to accomplishing some rare feat that might actually be untouchable. So far in Purdue men's basketball NCAA tournament history, they have lost to a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, and 16 seed uh, opponent. They only have left is five, seven, nine, and fourteen. So, can we just, as a committee, can you guys start potentially putting them in situations where they have to you know, be a ten and play a seven, or be you know a, a three and play the fourteen and somehow lose, just so we can get them to cross off all sixteen in the next you know ten years? That'd be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and this Purdue team was insanely overrated. We talked about this about. And again, I had personal reasons I was going to stay away from Purdue. I didn't expect them to be upset in the first round. So don't think I'm sitting here telling you that I saw Fairleigh Dickerson University upsetting Purdue. I, I, I was talking in the hostile takeover sense, like I knew that they wouldn't be covering spreads. I thought they would make it to maybe the Sweet 16. But we also said that the East bracket was, was a landmine. And just there are so many possibilities of them to have a misstep along the way. That didn't terribly shock me to see Purdue get upset there. But here's the crazy thing. Do they have the Virginia magic where next year they wind up rolling straight to a national title? I think that really comes down with Edie. Um, and you looked at last year's Purdue team the year before, they had shooters who could get you know, could, who could help break up the monotony of the offense, generate some threes, get some runs going. This year they haven't had the shooters and they kind of survived off of Edie and free throws, and it really bit them. Um, and it bit them bad. 
when it came down to this, this tournament where I think they got a little too high on the horse. And, that, you know, it wasn't just them shooting bad. You know, looking at Jeff Goodman, who reported that going into Sunday, uh, collectively in the tournament, the teams are shooting 30.6% from beyond the arc, which is putrid. Um, the lowest it's ever been in probably about 15, 20 years. So no one's shooting the three. They're just jacking up a bunch of bricks left and right. So shooting hasn't been that great. It's been a lot of foul trouble, a lot of free throws. And if you look at that Kansas-Arkansas game, they had two guys get fouled out, had I think six other guys collectively had four fouls by the end of the ball game. And it was a one-point game. Tons of free throw shooting, no longer uh, dominant from beyond the arc. And whoever can just survive and get through 40 minutes plus um, with, with the more points than the opponent. So what's been your favorite game of the first two rounds here? Let's, what's been the most entertaining Ooh. game to you? I, I really, I, lo- I lost it on the Furman game just because of such a boneheaded move by the point guard from Virginia just to kind of chuck the ball down, down the court thinking that you could throw it far enough to get time expired. One of the dumbest moves I've seen a kid make. I again, the kid's probably a great kid. He just made a really when I'm saying a, one of the dumbest moves a kid's made. It's really dumb basketball play. Very dumb basketball play. I will say the Princeton win um, was just absolutely fantastic. It sort of you know it captures you. And you know you brought up the point about the the underdogs and the Cinderellas and seeing not just the men win, the women won the first round the day after, and then. Princeton wins and, and goes to the Sweet 16. You sort of see the, the momentum they've picked up from every game, but that first one really set the tone of we're going to shock everybody and we're going to get after it. Um, closely followed by that Kansas-Arkansas one-point Arkansas win. Just that arena full of so much life. You had the Texas fans who don't know who to root for. Uh, do they cheer for Arkansas? Do they cheer for Kansas? Do they go Big 12? Because they're rivals of both. And you have them sort of just – they're, they want to see the upset, but they're not sure if they want to see the upset. And you have both the fans going back and forth, and Musselman takes his shirt off at the end of the game. And, you know, it's, the whole chaos of that was just an amazing showdown. Yeah. Uh, I'm impressed by Eric Musselman, man. That was, that was impressive. Him, his third straight Sweet 16, along with you know, Arkansas and UCLA, both become veterans when it comes down to this. And it, now they potentially could be, you know, facing off. Yeah. All right, Fresh, so let's go into the Sweet 16 here as we have reca- kind of given a quick recap of what's been going on here. I'm still looking at that South Regional right now, and, and Alabama, they have just been cruising in the first two rounds. Do you see anyone being able to knock off? Do you see anyone having a chance to prevent Alabama from getting into the Final Four? I um, mean, San Diego State... They played almost perfect in their second round, and I don't know if they have enough offense. And it comes down to the winner of Creighton-Princeton. Do either of them have magic? I mean, great for the Big East to have three teams in the Sweet 16 and Marquette not being one of them, but I don't know if Creighton has enough um, to take down Bama. I think Bama has a – they just – their own – their biggest problems themselves. They just need to play through um, the next two ball games and don't overlook anyone and just go through – don't go through the motions. Stay focused because it's an easy path for them to make it to the Final Four. Yeah, I'm looking at them too, and I go, it, it's just crazy. I almost feel like that Alabama's got a real easy path even into the championship game. Whoever's going to come out of that East, while they're going to be battle-tested, you know, you take a look at some of the really high-quality teams that we thought would have a good chance of competing with Alabama, and they're already all knocked out. I do like, I watched that Kansas State-Kentucky game today. That Kansas State team is pretty good. Like, that's a pretty darn good ball squad over there. I really like them. I mean, Keontae Johnson's really, you know, come on. He's risen to the team. The guys have played along with them. They've all bought in. Um, they play ferocious defense. They shoot. They're athletic. They're quick. They've, I think, helped. They're the one Big 12 team that's really been up. We'll see what happens with TCU if they can, you know, how they do with Gonzaga the rest of the night. But they have took advantage of that league being so tough and playing through Kansas, playing through Texas. And they are showing that they have the ability. And out of that path, yeah, they have Tom Izzo coming up in Michigan State. And I think they're much more you know, competitive, much more well-rounded than Michigan State is. Well, uh, and then you have Tennessee and FAU facing up the other side. Ten- Tennessee played man, fantastic versus Duke, but can that offense continue, can they continue to move forward? K-State's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, they are in a really good spot right there. I really do like K-State out of that East. I think it is going to come down to Tennessee but it, and K-State there. You take a look at K-State is 
holding opponents under 55 points in the first two rounds there. Making Duke shoot six for 22, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, six for 22 from behind the arc. Keeping them down, they, that means they were closing out on threes. Great job out of them. I think they have the defensive capability to really give Alabama some fits. But again, it comes back to that point. Does Tennessee have the offense to be able to make a run to put themselves into the championship game? So personally for me, I'm I'm with you, Fresh. I'm between Kansas State and Tennessee coming out of the East here. Who do you got? I, I'll say I'll, I'll take I'll take Kansas State myself. Honestly, the thought of seeing Tennessee going to the Final Four makes me want to throw up. Um, I don't. I I can't do it. I gotta say Kansas State. Um, I think I think that K State Tennessee game might be in a ama- It will be an amazing regional final, but I think the Wildcats do just enough. Yeah. All right, Fresh. Let's go to the other side of the bracket. The West is crazy. Things getting wild out west. I. I think this one's going to come down to UCLA and U- UConn. I, I, now, don't get me wrong. Arkansas is playing really good basketball. And to beat Kansas in the second round, phenomenal job out of them. But UConn looked incredible versus St. Mary's. I got it, the lead eight coming down to UConn, UCLA. Two, again, name schools, two blue bloods. I think that both of these schools, I go UCLA because I picked UCLA to make it to the national title game. I'm sticking with my pick over there in the West, but give me a little bit about how you see it working out out there in the West. I mean, UConn, Arkansas is going to be a battle. You got Hurley and Musselman, um, both teams, both coaches are battle tested. Both programs are battle tested. Um, they're both coming from the two strongest leagues that have teams remaining. Both the uh, SEC and the Big Big East both have three teams in the Sweet 16. Um, I got to give the edge to UConn in that case because Arkansas, they, they get in too much foul trouble. If you look past all their past few games, they get in foul trouble late, and that's what burns them. They play, in, they play tight until like the under four, and then that foul trouble, if they are there, guys are getting fouled out, and they don't have their shooters and their stoppers. Musselman's got to work through that. They've been to two straight Elite Eights. They win this one. Three straight Elite Eights, put some more pressure on him. Um, I just don't think they have enough firepower this time. I think UConn takes that one. And I don't care if it's, you know, whoever UCLA has to play. I think they've built some confidence. Mitch Cronin um, is a fantastic coach. He has built that program, got them to be very consistent. I think UCLA, UConn is going to have some real 90s vibes to it. Um, I think UConn takes out UCLA. They have a vibe right now they're playing with. UConn may go to the Final Four, um, and there's a party in stores, Connecticut. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me at all if that winds up happening. UCLA, though, is playing some some of the most disciplined basketball I have seen in a long time. They have 24 total fouls in two games so far. Just to give you some context, Arkansas had 25 total personal fouls in the game against Kansas. And UCLA has one less in two rounds. It's a disciplined team. It's a well-defended team. UConn, don't get me wrong, I think it's going to be one. Get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a hell of a matchup between UConn and UCLA. I think if Arkansas were to clip UConn, I think actually UCLA would have maybe an easier path because I think they're a much, I think they match, I think UConn gives them a matchup problem. Still think UCLA is better. I, I'm, I'm going with the defensive team why I've seen with my own two eyes. But then when you, I wouldn't be shocked if UConn could overcome that on UCLA. Arkansas, I think that the difference is, is a little greater. With the, now, if, say, say Gonzaga finds a way to beat TCU, they've played a lot of games in Vegas. This regional is in Vegas. Does that, if, they, if they got there, does that give them a little comfort level of knowing, all right, I'm, I'm in my same area, I'm in the same comfort zone, same arena that I've played in before? Um, what are your thoughts on that if they did there, if they got in? Just like I told you, Fresh, I trust you enough that I told you at the beginning of when we started talking March Madness not to trust Purdue. You told everyone not to trust Gonzaga. I don't trust Gonzaga. I don't care if we're, we're playing this in, in Spokane, Washington. I don't care if we're playing at the Key Arena in Seattle, the old Supersonics home. I don't trust Gonzaga. I don't. I'm sorry. I, I get it. And, and I, I hate to say this. And again, we're recording this while 
Gonzaga and TCU are wrapping up here, but I really feel like, eh, like whoever comes out of this game, eh. So yeah. I really they're, think it's our teams. Well, right now they're down by five to the Hypnotoads uh, from from Fort Worth uh, at halftime. So it's a we'll see if they even get that far. All right, fresh one more bracket. We're going to the Midwest. Who you got coming out in the Midwest? This is an intriguing one because that Texas Xavier game, while a lot of people had like Xavier on upset alert, and now you got Texas who fended off a damn good Penn State team. Like, I hope people don't just look back and go, oh, you know, Texas went off on Penn State. Like, Penn State for the first time, they average. Texas did a great job defensively. They held Penn State took 28 threes and shot less than or shot right above 25% from behind the arc, which was a remarkable job out of the Longhorns. What do you got going on in the Midwest there? Well, so far, Xavier, those Musketeers have been playing a lot like the Kiefer Sutherland, Chris O'Donnell Musketeers uh, when they were the three Musketeer movie. And if they can bring that up against Texas, um, they might find themselves in a final four. Uh, the other side, Houston Cougars, potentially most likely it's looking like the Miami Hurricanes. I honestly think Miami could take Houston in that Sweet 16 matchup. They are playing with a lot more fire. I think Houston's still a little overrated. Maybe the motivation of, hey, we're so close to playing in Houston for the final four. But the Hurricanes, you know, Coach Laranega, they find ways to get done. I, I'm going to say it right now. As much as everyone wants a Texas-Houston you know, matchup to go to play in the final four in Houston. I'm taking the hurricanes in that one matchup. And I think Texas just has enough. So we're going to have a Texas, Miami, both teams in football are not back, but their basketball teams are holding it down. And the Longhorns go to the final four um, to represent the state of Texas in, in Houston. Yeah. Miami's going to be the team that Houston is matched up with here. It's just, just about ready to go official. Um, Isaiah Wong has been, phenomenal for the hurricanes but you know i think it's one of those teams like we keep doubting houston and we keep doubting houston doubting houston and it's almost like tcu during the football season like we were like okay yeah tcu is really good but tcu is really good but we kept saying that all season long and same thing with houston coming up we were like okay houston yeah they struggle a little bit with northern kentucky but then we were like, oh, well, when they get, obviously, when they get to Auburn, Auburn's going to get them there. And they handled their business versus Auburn. If they handle their business, let's say Houston does beat Miami in the Sweet 16. At what point do you become a believer in the Houston, Houston Cougars? When they make the Final Four. Okay. So they have- like you brought up, because, because you brought up the TCU thing, everyone kept believing and then. They pulled off the major upside of Michigan, and then they got steamrolled. Event, you know, eventually, you start playing outside your league. And the basketball is a little different, I, but I, I'll be a believer if they make the Final Four. Yeah. I, I, think that, I think that if they make it to the Elite Eight, then we're going to be like, okay, Houston's got a real chance at winning this whole thing. Like At that point, uh, I'll start to believe it there. I, I'm sticking with, again, I have three teams left for my original Final Four pick with Alabama, Texas, UCLA, and I had Duke in the final four uh, down there in the East, but that's no longer happening. So I'm sticking with those three, and I will say I'm, I've got Kansas State now. I'm going to change my pick. Are you cha- Fresh, I know you have uh, some changes you have to make. Definitely. Um, you know, Kansas and Kentucky let me down in the house of takeover and let me down in my bracket. Um, I'm still rolling through Alabama. And I'll have Alabama versus. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Have the bracket in front of me. I think they're going. They would have to play Kansas State. Kansas State. Yep. And then UConn versus Texas. Um, I had Texas and Alabama originally. I'm going to go ahead. Give me UConn, Alabama to play for the title, and uh, the team that's not UConn will win the national championship. Oof! Pain in you to say that there. I'm, that's, I'm, why, that's why I didn't say it. I'm, I'm staying, sticking with Alabama will make the national title game against uh, UCLA. I'll stick with UCLA winning the national title. We'll, 
We'll check back a week from now to see if we're correct or how crazy wrong we've been. So this has been now, wild. I, I will say if a Mecca Oka four, Kemba Walker, Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton somehow found themselves on the court wearing UConn jerseys in that national title game, I would switch my pick. Yeah, absolutely. But this this UConn team, pretty darn good UConn team, man. I, I can't. I Very really, good. I really hope they get past Arkansas and and get to match up with UCLA in the lead eight because that will be a, a really really good game. Now, before we wrap up, if K State if K State makes the Final Four, think about that. Their football team actually won the Big Twelve. Mm-hmm. They went to the Sugar Bowl. And then your team's going to the final four. Great year. That's a that's a heck of a run in, in the little man, little apple there. Yeah, Manhattan, Kansas, man. We've talked about it. it's a great place. Kansas State, great place, man. We should do a head out there one football season, do a little tailgating out there. And... Yeah, I'm all down for it. I, I'll talk to you something about off air. I, I've been taking notes while I was at uh, on vacation here, fresh. So I got some notes in the notebook. I like it. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, hey, you're listening to another episode. Before you close this out, hit that subscribe bu- button, hit the notification bell, get notified every single time we get drop an episode here. Hit the notifications. You can get notified sometimes, all the times. You know, just hit us up every single time that we drop a new episode. Make sure it gets into your ears or your eyes if you're watching this on the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast from, whether that's Apple, Spotify, Good Pods, Stitcher, Amazon Pods. I don't know. There's a bunch of them. Leave us that five-star review because you guys know Fresh and I, we're those five-star prospects. Special thank you to our producer, Drew. Without him, none of this is possible. So make sure you're going to spinablesports.com. Yep, that is spinablesports.com. A lot of stuff there. We're almost to draft season. There's going to be a bunch of stuff on the NFL draft. I know, Fresh, you're on vacation this week, you are telling me. Uh, well, technically vacation, but you're going to be dropping some new stuff for Spinnable Sports. So make sure you're logging onto that website, checking us out, follow us on social media, interact with us. There we go, fresh. Yep, yeah, it's uh, kind of like a, a medical week for me. So I'll be laid up on the couch typing up a bunch of articles. So it's the only way I can stop from being bored. Hey, okay. there's no with more. That, time. everybody. Y'all have a great week. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone.